Hey, welcome back to the Osborne Wool Products Builder Studio. I'm Jonah. Today we are going to be building a set of floating uh, nightstands for a bedroom. We're also going to be hanging these with the Osborne um, floating shelf uh, hardware kit. Um, this is part 933. This is the 18 inch version of this. Um, so we're going to walk through um, some tips and tricks on mounting those, getting your boxes built. Um, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about the lumber that we have. Today we have selected pine for our build. Um, we're going to um, be using the two long boards to make uh, most of our box. First we're going to get these boards cut down to size um, so that way we can get them uh, ready to glue up. Uh, we're just going to cut them on our, on our miter saw um, and then we'll, uh, we'll get our final sizes ready and glue them up. Um, as I mentioned to hang these on the wall um, we have the uh, floating shelf hardware kit. Um, this is, you know, this can be used for many different things. Um, essentially what we're going to do, this piece will go into our wall and then this piece will mount to our box or our nightstand and clip onto each other. Um, so we're going to recess these, we're going to recess this in the back of our nightstand um, and then it'll just clip right on the wall once we get it mounted. Um, so we're, we'll go through that later, but first um, let's jump over to our miter saw, start cutting our miters and talk about that a little bit. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is cut my ends flush. Um, the ends, uh, these boards have been glued up. Um, so this is just a three quarter inch thick board. Um, we've got them at 12 inches deep. So this is going to be the depth that's coming off the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and square this, these ends up and get them cut flush so that I can um, have a good surface to pull my measurements from so that we can start um, getting some measurements taken for our box. Okay, so now that I've got my board squared up on the ends, now I can start pulling my measurements. Um, so the overall dimensions, I'm gonna pull up my little sketch here. So the overall dimension of our box, um, our box is going to be roughly 20 inches wide. Um, that's when it's said and done on the wall. It's going to be roughly 20 inches wide, um, 14 inches tall, and 12 inches deep. So we've already got 12 inches on our depth. Um, that's good. That's what we have these boards made to. Um, so now we're going to start measuring for our miter cuts. Um, so what I'm going to do is just cut everything to length and then I'm just going to take the corners off. Uh, I'm just going to miter the corners. So let's go ahead and get some measurements um, and uh, get ready to cut these miters. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, pick the side of my board um, that I want to show. Um, so the side that I don't pick is going to be inside the box. You're not going to see it. Um, so I'm just going to check and see which side I like better. Um, I actually think I like the side that I had it on. Um, so um, I know for one box I need two um, boards that are 20 inches and I need two boards that are 14 inches. That's for my side. So two 20 inch boards for my top and bottom, uh, two 14 inch boards for my sides. So, um, let's go ahead and start measuring these out. Um, we will, um, come back when we're ready to cut those, uh, and then we'll, we'll get them mitered and ready to glue up. All right, so I've got the boards cut out for my box. Um, now we are ready to miter the corners. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and lay them out um, just so we have an idea of how they look. Um, I'm gonna choose the side that I want to be the bottom or the top. Um, this one's got a lot of knots, so I think I'm obviously gonna make that with my bottom. This is a really nice piece. Um, I'm gonna choose this to be my top side. So this is gonna be the part that, you know, things set on, if you've got a lamp or something. Um, so we're just going to kind of build this box out just to kind of get a rough idea of what we're looking like. So this is roughly how our box is going to look minus the miters. Obviously this is, you know, not assembled. Um, we don't have the corners cut so that we can glue up. 
So it's gonna be much more um, refined once that gets done. So um, now that we've got the rough uh, measurements of our box, um, let's go ahead and miter these corners and uh, then we'll get ready to glue this up. All right, so now I've got my uh, pieces mitered and ready to go together. Um, so let me get some, some painter's tape and we'll, we'll tape these together, um, line them up and, and see how our miters look and then we'll uh, glue these up. All right, so now our uh, box is dry, we've got it out of our clamps. So we are ready to move on to installing our back nailer board. Um, not technically a nailer board because we're not going into the wall with it. We're, we're gonna mount our, um, our bracket to it. Um, so as you can see, essentially what we're gonna do is, is mount this here, and then we'll come in the back and install that. We're gonna install it with pocket holes. So um, I've already got this cut down to size. Uh, so this span here was 18 and a half inches. Uh, that's including you know, our 20 inches uh, minus the three quarter inch thick material that we used. So we needed to cut an 18 and a half inch piece. So I've got that cut, that fits in there nicely. So now we are going to install our pocket holes in here. Um, so let's get our jig set up and we'll, we'll start drilling those. All right, so this piece is 18 and a half inches long. Um, so the center of that would be nine and a quarter. So I will just mark nine and a quarter right in the center of my board. The hardware itself is 18 inches long. So I want about a quarter of an inch on each side of this back nailer board. Um, and it's good to have a board that's not the complete width of your hardware that you're mounting um, because you want some wiggle room and some movement in there for when you go to install it. Um, we're going to get this board recessed um, to the size that it needs to be to fit this hardware. So let's uh, switch the camera around. I'll show you how to do that. The measurement of my hardware here, um, so the thickness is what we're going after. So I want the tip of this hook on this hardware to sit flush with my back, the back of my panel. So that's about a 3 eighths of an inch um, inset uh, that we're gonna recess into this box. I'm gonna go ahead and mark on both sides here where I need to install my back panel so that I can mount my hardware to it. Um, and then we'll get our hardware mounted just to make sure that we're level. Now, uh, the screws that come with the hardware kit are inch and a quarter pan head screws. Um, for my material thickness, it's just a little too long and it's gonna bust through the top. Um, so I'm not gonna use the ones that come with the kit, but they are available there um, if you order that and it works for you. You don't really need this many screws. Um, I just, with this heavier box, um, I like to do a few more screws in the back. Um, as you can see, there's plenty of holes for however many you feel like you need. Um, but I've just done these just to um, ensure that it's, uh, it's not going anywhere. It, this whole thing is very strong. So um, this is ready. Um, so now uh, we're going to move on to sanding our piece and then we will go through the steps to attach the other part to the wall and get these mounted. All right, so let's jump into the install with the hardware under the wall. Um, so to mount this, I just found how high I wanted it, which was 21 inches. Um, you also need to take into account how far your hardware sits down on your box. So for me, it was an inch and a half. As you can see, this uh, also has a built-in leveler that you can use, uh, so you don't need an external leveler. Uh, very handy. So I just got that level on the wall with my marks. Um, I marked where I was gonna drill my pilot holes for my uh, screws. 
I did three of the wall dog screws that are included in the kit. Um, so I did the center one into a stud. Um, the other two were into anchors just to have some extra support um, with this additional weight. Um, you technically don't need studs or anchors with this type of screw. Um, it's a very, very strong uh, screw. So I got these installed at the wall and screwed down tight. Um, and now I was ready to take my box and uh, install my nightstand on the clip. As you can see, it slides on very easily. It's not going anywhere and is a very sturdy option. Thanks for joining me again in the Osborne Wood Products Builder Studio. Um, if you were interested in any of the parts used in this video, like the floating shelf hardware from Osborne or our dimensional lumber, um, I'll leave the links in the description for both of those. Feel free to check out the Builder Studio playlist below if you are looking for more Builder Studio content. Uh, check out our last video where we built a tabletop using a reverse glue joint bit. Um, also, be sure to like and subscribe. Drop us a comment if you have any suggestions for future videos. That's it for this video. We hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it practical and helpful with this hardware. So be on the lookout for new videos and we'll see you next time.